Hello there, and welcome to the International Classic. You're looking at creative name from Germany. He's playing as the Soviets. This is Nexus. He's up against none other than the reigning world champion and best player in the world, Isildur. And I'm introducing to you a veteran of ESL, a veteran of King of the Hill, GCS, and the world championship itself. It's your man, Stormless. Woohoo! What's up, everybody? <laughs> nice to be here with everyone again. And, of course, UAE. UAE, isn't that to the United Arab, Arab Emirates? <laughs> <laughs> you, you backed A by oil. <laughs> shout out to the UAE there. <laughs> no, of course. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, you, the one and only. Ah, oh, thank you very much. I'm enjoying that. Here we go. We've got a Silda who's rocketing out of his base on times two speed. He's got his MG in tow. And his chosen commander is Jaeger Infantry Doctrine, a very popular commander for this tournament. Stormus, you're staying abreast of things. You, I've seen you a lot in auto match in the past year. Is that right? Yep, I've finally made pretty much top 100 in all five factions now. It's my goal for the year. <laughs> so I have been playing a lot, um, but of course I haven't actually been casting a lot of the competitive matches. So I think I know what we're likely to see, but um, I'd be interested to see what the very, very top level is, is playing like at the moment. I do the antithesis of you. I'm top 500 in all one factions. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> MG of... No, let's all just concentrate on the Silda. Stormless and I will probably have time to catch up after we've seen this hellacious confrontation between one of the players that... CN, by the way, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you don't might not know who CN is. He's one of the few players in the world who actually has a chance of beating the mechanical nightmare of Silda. He actually has a chance. Imagine that. Yeah, Creative Name was always a really, really good player, and um, even back when I think he was more a 2v2 player, still very, very good. It's nice to see him transition into the 1v1 scene as well as he has. It's the same story with Isildur, though, kind of historically. Isildur, very, very good 2v2 player, exploded into the uh, 1v1 scene like two years ago. Pretty much unstoppable. Um, Be best thing about 2v2, I find Stormless 2v2, it allows you to kind of perfect the game without being overtasked. So you have a few less things to think about because obviously you've got a teammate. So you're able to perfect the mechanics and the flow of battle. And that is just a recipe for perfection because we're seeing it time and time again. As Silda, CN both uh, started off with 2v2 competitive and they work their way into 1v1. And by the time they're ready to tackle the big bad boys of the scene, they're, they're, you know, they're cooking on all cylinders. So it's certainly a good formula. Yeah, I think it teaches you most importantly like flanking because in the 2v2 you're always kind of up against some block in the center and you, you have to be creative, you have to flank and uh, you know, you, you get a lot of practice out of doing that. Um, we can talk a little bit about the game, double uh, engineer opening from creative name and uh, this is nice, it gives a lot of vision. Uh, the pioneers, sorry, the engineers have a slightly larger vision range so he's able to scout for those machine guns and perhaps flank with the conscripts that he has in the early game to get around. This combat engineer, so uh, there you go, bursting out with a burst of flames there. So CN push, pushing a Silda back. The MG's also in an interesting scenario. It's now isolated. I oh, know it has a three-man grenadier helping out, but good flank from the extra combat engineer of CN are now going to give the MG reason to reconsider its position. This is a fantastic early game from Creative Name. He's really, really focused on the uh, territory cutoff points. You can see there, just denying the munitions for Isildur right from the start. Probably expects that he's going to be picking a commander with G43s and wants to just make sure these Grenadiers do not become uh, more powerful than the conscripts. So uh, it's a really, really nice start to the game, actually. It's, it's been excellent. He's uh, possibly found Isilda being a little bit too cocky there with his MG42. I feel that Isilda was trying to do too much with too little and was committing one of his only three Grenadiers to the south at the same time in one of these long pitched engagements. And here comes the combat engineer with the flamethrower. This, this, and this Grenadier is now going to be marooned. That's going to be another confrontation lost for Isilda in the early game. The mighty Brit, the double world champion. And a champion of many other tournaments as well. is having a tough old time of it there. Yeah, he's in such a difficult position because he needs to make sure his opponent doesn't have double fuel. I don't even think he really cares about the fuel for himself right now. It's just about not letting his opponent climb up to a potential tier 3, rushing out a T70 quickly. Yes, the fear of a T70 rush means he's going to have to go pack first out of tier 2. No chance to get the Spy Hunter, Spy Hunter, Spy Hunter, Scout Car working for him. It's got multiple ramifications losing this many 
this many tactical battles in the early game, it's just going to really put, put him in a tricky spot for a while. Hey, it's been uh, many, many years since I saw someone open up with uh, four Grands and an MG. This is uh, this is quite an aggressive infantry game from Isildur. And actually, I think it tips him above creative name now to get back onto the map. Um, he is going to have that infantry advantage, but just as you see there, a lot of mines have been planted by creative name. He's utilizing all of the early game munitions that he has to make sure that he just keeps wiping the occasional models off, keeping his conscripts with that advantage of manpower. Indeed, 30 manpower a pop, and the reason, Stormless, you've not seen builds such as this one, this is very reminiscent of, uh, I think, Aimstrong, Devon, Paula kind of plays from 2016 when we used to cast an ESL. But no, the reason we're seeing this is because Ostrupen have been banned. That's right, tournament organizers no longer rely on the balancing to finally get rid of them. We're just deleting them from the game. Ah, feels good, man. Hey. Sometimes it, it has to be done. <laughs> it has to just like taking a, you know, faithful old dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Fido, you bitter child. It's time to take you out back. That's what we've done with the Ostrupen. And in this case, the child is the poor viewers who had to watch many um, me mechanized versus Ostrupen game. Wow, listen, six minutes, 30 seconds, and Isildur's just starting to build his tier two now back in base. Um, if he decides to go scout car at this point, I'll be very surprised um, that it's possible that he still might. Big shout out to Izzy though. He has pushed uh, CN back quite rapidly. He's not been able to... Well, he has been able to cap the Northern Fuel rather. So all this, you know, touting how well CN's done. If he lets Isilda have a period of dominance now, they'll all be equal. Let's check out the stats in the early going. We can see that of course, you know, it's, it's Fairmatch versus Soviets that they're seeing that kind of dynamic there but if we see on army value soldiers probably eked ahead a little bit on points held there's the difference that's a cm just dominating the early game all the way up to that fifth minute are my eyes okay oh, you got some weird mechanic going on there with the oh uh <laughs> when i pick the stats up it takes its time to two speed <laughs> like, hang on a second <laughs> Do you remember when I tried these scripts out? I think it was Anniversary Classic and they all went wrong and they ruined a cast live in front of a thousand odd people. Well, now I've got them working, so that's that's what you're seeing there. I remember those days at least. We've all anyway, taken some uh, big risks to uh, get Company of Heroes 2 casting what it is today. Uh, Isildur, by the way, he's managed to uh, get uh, Pioneers with the combat support package. They're now mine sweeping. They're just trying to uh, wire off any of the green cover that's giving the conscripts stable footing on the map. Um, I actually think Creative Name here, he has really, really dived in for this T70, and he just has to make this work now. It's uh, a bit of a gamble, actually, because he just doesn't have uh, the manpower advantage on the field anymore, so he's relying a lot on this T70 to do a lot of damage, especially to those support weapons. Just uh, maybe run in with the conscripts. I don't know if he's got uh, anti-tank grenades. We've got a cutoff in the north northeast as uh, as well coming in sorry did he have anti-tank grenades he doesn't at the moment fair enough he's sorry he's gone for the cutoff in the northeast he's gone for guards as well to help out the two the t70 and one thing to point out by the way he led with the minesweeper there so although he's obviously gone aggressive straight into the t70 he is being kept cautious all the same he has a lot of respect for his british nemesis Actually, a really tough position. I wonder if he's created a, a difficult situation for himself against four grenadiers now an AT gun on the field from the Sildor because you really have to keep the distance with the T70 and positioning is just absolutely crucial at all times to make sure you don't get the Faust, to make sure that you are actually every shot delivered is you know gonna actually hit on target, and maybe deal some splash damage and green cover. You know, it's uh, a high maintenance unit when it's on the field, but look at this nice crazy stop for the, the God Squad. <laughs> So much DPS from the guard squad there, Dan. They got the 2-2-2 two, two, two down to half health. Then the nade came in, punished the grenadiers as well. So nice start for the very important elite infantry of the Soviets. Our opponents are seizing a sector. You're liking what you see by this uh, conf this uh, battle so far, Dan? Is it is it what you wanted? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look. It's always like a game of stages. It's nice to see like everything have its window of opportunity. Creative name, massive presence, all map control at the start of the game. It's all massively turned that around now. And 
I just think it's very interesting and so much infantry to play with. I always love games like this because players are really just four corners of the map. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they got to control so much. Oh, rifle made over the fence there. Conscripts almost punished even more so than they were. Pack misses its shot. You've got Vet 2 Combat Engineer forcing away this Grenadier. Double crit on two of the Soldats in there. I have to say, you know, this T-70 is just all over the place right now. It's causing loads of problems from the seal, but he has managed to get... It's a very, very long shot with a lot of green cover in the way. And the green <laughs> cover is going to absorb the AT shell. But, um, you know, he's bouncing that AT gun left, right. Now he's in there with the uh, flamethrowers of the engineers. I mean, it's really, really just good pressure from Creative Name here. He's just trying to find the support weapons. Make sure he, uh, you know, forces those back to retreat, bouncing the AT left and right on the map. It was so one aggressive. Of, definitely. It's one of those rare nerfs that ends up being a buff. They nerfed the T-70's damage and made it so it's more consistent, but less spike. And because it's more consistent, it means the players play a little bit more reservedly with them. And they do exactly what they should be. They quarterback shots. Nice destruction of the mine there with the minesweeper. But they basically play a little bit more cautiously with them, Dan. They climb the veterancy scale. They don't go mental trying to wipe a grenadier on retreat. And it's just something I've noticed that T-70s in elite players' hands are just as powerful as ever, with even with the nerfs. They are, but I think it has a, a much better role than we used to see it, because it used to be just like an aggressor unit. Now it fulfills that late-game recon unit, which I think that's kind of where it is so good in the late game you know, actually being able to have that forward vision you know make sure your infantry especially if you're playing with like many conscripts they're going to be able to flank properly they're going to be able to hit all the gaps in the lines it's a beautiful unit really um, it is a even pyramid still, of destruction I mean, indeed mg42 comes out now for izzy and these units are looking to be nerfed slightly in upcoming balance changes because they're so difficult to unroot these days with those crew members leading the way so two of them on Nexus is really going to allow him to stabilize the front. MG42 team is ready for action. The machine guns are tough. Actually, the like, Sildor really wants to lock down an area now. I think he's kind of had a really good, uh, we'd call it like the second stage of the game. Maybe like eight, <laughs> these eight to 12 minutes has been really good for Sildor. Now Creative Name's got the control again, but... Isildur has everything he needs right now to kind of start locking down an area of the map, generating those resources, and start getting the tech going for his first tank. Definitely. It's definitely the, a stage. I think we've called it early to mid in the past, and we've seen the early game dominate CN, and then Isildur straight away back into that early to mid. It's exactly what he did in both World Championships. Um, oh, Grenadiers, that building in the north. I think that's the first squad wipe of the game. Eh? Isildur just took his eye off of the uh, top building there. In the factories, he killed something in the factory with the LMG. Oh, I can see the flames burning all around them, indeed. There we go. Our industry grows to support us. Interested to see if the Silver goes uh, you know, to pick up that extra infantry squad again. Or uh, whether he wants to actually pull out the Jaeger command squad from his doctrine. Oh, it's so unfortunate when your conscripts run on the front side of green cover. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and they're stuck there, pinned there. They're not getting back up. Was, oh, nice rifle made as well. So, so unlike Isilda to leave his uh, attention off one of his units there, such an avid TAC map specialist, you know. It's very rare for him to lose a, an early squad like that. Grenadier down indeed. A Maxim out for CN. Go on, what were you going to say, Stormus? I was just say, I think this is, you know, when you have a scout car and a T-70, it's like, you just have to put so much focus onto, you know, making sure that they're in the correct position at all times. You know, we've got guards on the field, we've got the AT guns that are on the field. And it's just like, I think it's just too much sometimes. He thought he was in a good position there in the in the building, thought he was safe. <laughs> but so. the Era Fields is a really good st statistician of the, he's like, you know, a modern day equivalent of of one of the many, uh, like Cruzy, for example. Uh, he says you cannot see garrisoned infantry on the TAC map. <laughs> so that's where Isilda was just caught with his pants down. He can't see the garrisoned in infantry on the TAC map, so that's why he didn't preserve that squad as well as he usually would have done. It all makes so much sense now. <laughs> wow. 
I just I just want to point out something that Creative Aim did that I spotted that was really cool. So in the north, I don't know if you can see where the crates are next to the fuel in the north, and there's a dying grenadier there. Isildur actually had stealth units there. Creative name edged the T70 just like close, 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 close until they just appeared and then was able to get it out before the Faust. It's like he kind of knew it was there, do you know what I mean? He just orchestrated that yes. perfectly. Very well played by, uh, as I say, this creative name. People basically forced him to enter this tournament. I think Alpern basically strong harmed him. He's one of the few players that's capable of taking down a Zelda, and we've seen it every step of the way in this game that they seem very evenly pitted. Zis Barosh in against the MG. We've also got the Panzer IV roaring onto the field. Panzer IV is going to be going for that T70, which just took a Faust on the South VP. There is a Telemine also, just, um, I don't know how to describe it to you, slightly south of the VP and that corridor between the buildings. Just want to point that out because that probably will be pivotal at some point in this game. I'm sure the fans can see it. I can't see it. My eyes aren't trained to see Telemines. Slightly <laughs> north of the house and where the bushes are. Okay, right. I'll take your word for it. I, I don't look away. I honestly don't look away from any more action. Right, slightly north of the house. There, I see it. I got it, Stormus. I got it. I'm so happy with myself. I see it. Guys, I am basically partially sighted. I've been doing most of my casting with echolocation over the years. <laughs> you ever hear me doing like weird clicks? Like of uh, The Last of Us. Anywho, MG is under a bit of pressure here. The at Maxim, no, he's got the Zis backing him up. Conscripts also enter the situation and forced away immediately. I'll tell you what, Silda, after that early to mid phase, we're now definitely in the middle of the game and he's looking imperious. Have you seen these machine guns in the center? Actually, one with the stealth. So, even actually, if you were to spot the first machine gun there. Which I think, uh, actually, yep, yeah, Creative Name doesn't have the vision for that. It's like, even if you try to flank around it, you will just get suppressed by the next one. It's oh. a really, really formidable machine gun placement. It's, it's, it's very good indeed. Gar's just shredded models there. That's not not healthy for CN. He's really beginning to struggle now. Isilda beginning to dominate. And he just, as I say, needs to pick a side and try and, try and wrestle it away from the Brit. You have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. You know what's really nice, A.E.? Eh? Like, I remember for years when when we've been casting, you know, and we always used to talk about, like, how we had all these stealth units in the game, and no one really plays with the stealth functionality properly. You know, we had, all, like, um, stormtroopers and, uh, you know, the Jaeger infantry, even, like, paratroopers can, can stealth with the bazooka upgrade, right? And then in recent patches, like, it, people have just started playing it. I don't know whether units just became more powerful or people like the play style more, but now, I mean, you just get some really, really good stealth games, you know, where everybody's got stealth positions, you've got to like get the recon up, you've got to be scouting, that T-70s is really important, it's just so beautiful really. Oh it's awesome. Oh, wombo combo there, we got the Faust and the pack taking out the T-70, the last thing CN needed at that point in time. He has been able to capture a fuel and a victory point, so go him in the south, but he's lost his light tank. Here comes his T-3485, but he could have done with his light tank being alive as well. Yeah, uh, the, the big loss is the vision. I mean, actually, he just needs tanks. some sight. You can't be running into stealth uh, machine guns and stealth grenadiers. Ugh. Massive yes. hit, by the way, from the Panzer IV. It was brutal, four wasn't it? models. By the way, and my answer is... to you with the, the smaller, finer details, the miniature of the game being used now. Big shot from the Zis. We have to watch out for this. We've got a rifle nade coming in. He knows he's okay. Oh, the damage he does to that Maxim. And the 2 2 2 comes to clear up. Oh, takes it out as well. Guard Squad is there to protect, but he's now going to try and take out the support weapon with the pack from afar. Yeah. You just feel At like 40, you're at a... Uh, it's actually going to take down the Maxim as well, so yeah. no longer recruitable. And uh, T-3485 is now on the field. I actually feel bad for Creative Name here, because this is a tough situation when you're up against an opponent who has stealth units all over the map. Really, like... Creative name has the VP in the south. It means he has to play in the south. But you can't risk, you know, time basically walking onto the map, getting suppressed by things you don't know where they are. You know, it's actually really right now. Creative name is going to have to spend pretty much everything he has 
just solidifying himself in the south and then working out from there. That is, I think, also an advantage for Isildur because he knows, I think, what his opponent has to do here and can, you know, also basically, you know, get himself into a good position to counter that. Two thirds for fires making a bit of a nuisance of itself. This isn't going to plan for the Brits. He's been pushed off again in the south, giving CN some vital breathing room. So the ultra-efficient abattoir, that, that's how Isildur sees uh, a tournament, by the way. He's just an ultra-efficient killing machine. And uh, and welcome, you know, you're all going to be made into various meat patties, etc. And we've got people in chat storms asking for him to be nerfed. Only play with one hand from now on. <laughs> One thing I will remark on, though, CN is uh, a bit of a Wehrmacht specialist himself, so even if he doesn't win his allies, he's still got an excellent chance in game two. Well, I mean, I'd never ever call a game like this over at this point. Um, still a lot going on right now. Actually, somehow, Creative Dame did manage to force away the Grenadiers that were in the north and stealth there. But uh, you just see, you know, as soon as he takes his... Uh, you know, finger off the button on the south. Immediately, a silver's there. He's captured the VP, he's decapped the fuel. Now we're going to see a Faust on the... Uh, beautiful use of fire. ambush sprint there. Damages it. Gets the ambush sprint off. T-34's out of commission for the next few minutes. You know, I, re I really think it's, it's going to be dangerous if Creative Naven tries to kind of win the map on all fronts here. I think he's going to find that that isn't going to work for him. Yeah, I think as I agree. I think his best strategy is just try and win one side for now and try and wait for a second tank to be out and then push as one, you know. He has to just buy his time because he's, he's bitten a few, lot, few too many losses at the moment for the last few minutes. Probably needs to recover. I don't know if it, I haven't actually clocked whether it's happening often or not, but I think as well he's running units back onto the map that aren't fully healed as well. So there's a, an air of perhaps desperation sometimes. We are losing a sector. Yeah, that's see... a new cologne um, for this Christmas. Air of desperation. Oh, double packs are lined up against the teeth. Just as it gets repaired. Oh, that would be horrible. <laughs> You know, it could be a lot worse though. Med packs coming down on the Grenadiers. Just behind the front lines there. We've got Zisk gun does find the 222. T34 gets a nice shot off on the Grenadiers. Combat engineers lead the way. Oh, look at that retreat. That is like four squads retreating for creative name. And when you see that, you just think something went wrong <laughs> in that engagement. It's got to have done. <laughs> Wasn't time very well. Double pack combo. T34 takes one to go. An extra pack shot on the side. We've got Conscript and Guards pushing. Oh, look at this game sense from Aselda. He expects that these squads have... Oh, well, he saw them win the, in, the infantry engagement. So straight away, the Panzer falls over there to deal with them. a quicker check around for uh, telemines. I don't see any in that area, so I think he might There's be There's okay. one just uh, south of the north field, oh, southwest yeah, of the deep. north field. Yeah, yeah. You're really careful when you're coming back into the map. <laughs> <laughs> and like the blind master in Kung Fu, you know, it's deceptive how I'm able to <laughs> understand these things. This is great AT placement, though, from creative name. It's got the button off with the guards. It's really nice. Can you get that second shot off? Oh! So close. So very close indeed. Meanwhile, in the center, got easily forced away those conscripts of the Grenadiers there. Second T3485 is on the way, but it's a Panther to meet them. So two packs, a Panther and a Panzer IV. CN's going to have more than his hands full. Oh, what a really difficult position. I mean, actually, I mean, e even now going into these engagements. You know, oh, he's rifle nading the Talon mine and destroys the combat engineer. Oh, my. Well, just because he's uh, at the moment Maximus Decimus Meridius and he's killing some poor shepherds in a sideshow um, 
Coliseum. He's still asking us, are you not entertained? Well, for that telemine explosion, at least we were entertained for a few seconds. Thank you, Isilda. He should have seen that coming. <laughs> it was visible to him, you know. <laughs> Why was he sweeping it in front of the Grenadiers? To be fair, maybe we're giving Isilda too many props there. Oh, this is tough. I mean, you look at that Jaeger command in the green cover. It's so difficult to dislodge that unit. You know, you have to basically bring a tank up there, and this is all, we'll just be expecting that that's the way he's going to deal with it. It's... Oh, here comes the forces in the north. He's going for a pack gun here. He's coming out. He's bursting out. He wants some level of revenge, but he's got a Faust off on his T-3485. Panther's there to mitigate. He's not taking... Yes, he has decrewed one pack. There's still another remaining, and basically just loses a tank. May get an MG42 out of it, though. Oh, he did destroy a Grenadier there, I believe, Stormus. Did you see that? I, I did, yep. And he's walking past the LMG upgrade for it. It's dropped. Time on a tradition there. Oh, Jaegers could die, by the way. They've been seen. LAB is now just falling from the sky above. Conscript's going to be very lucky to survive here. LMG Terminator Grenadiers gunning them down on retreat. And here comes the Panther. It's too desperate. Way too desperate for uh, for the Panther IV. But then again, you look at the VP, he doesn't have that much time. Something like that was probably needed. But it's just so well contained by a Sildor. Yeah, Kill the Panther really is so formidable. <laughs> and the gods are dead. The game's over. I'm pretty sure CN has quit now. It's just due to the new... Um, server issues. It doesn't say that the game is over. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a feature. I actually, because you know, like, go are on. we still live? We're live, yeah. Yeah, no, because you know, you know, when the game ends and you, it always has to go to victory strike, and you have like 10, 15 seconds where you can't continue playing that engagement you were really enjoying. Oh, do you yes. know what I mean? Yeah. I now do. you actually get. An extra minute <laughs> just, to tie, just, just to tie things up and then oh you go to the wind screen I, I, don't, I don't know if you're convincing me or <laughs> you're convincing actually but anyway one nil to a silder we definitely know that to be the case 26 minute 33 seconds of survival for cn yeah they, they always have the have him in the first five minutes don't they i don't know if that's by design these days <laughs> no idea <laughs> I don't know if I can get get Stormus to have a suit on, Captain Prog. Um, hang on, let me see. What? Uh, I... Do you know what? I didn't iron any yet today. That's all right. Let me see what I can do. They all used up during the week. That's looking good. There we go. Um, now for the meat, I want no, not that. I don't think we should have matching suits. This is the important things, guys. Most um, professional esports kind of communities at this point would probably segue into statistical analysis or something of that nature. Um, I just am trying to find. I swear I put a suit around here somewhere. <laughs> All these things I've got hidden away. I can get a blazer. No, no, no. You, you've got your suit on. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Ah, that's mine. Perfect. Hey, what do you mean? What are you doing? <laughs> we're, we're... <laughs> yeah, you're... Is, this, is this something I need to investigate? Probably. <laughs> hmm. <Okay. laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> you look absolutely huge, by the way. You've clearly been working out. You take up the entire room. <laughs> very good, very good. It's nice. It's a nice touch. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we've we're waiting for the second game to start. They both say they're ready. So CN is definitely ready for his second helping of fun, and. Um, let me invite you to the lobby. Let's get it on. How do you feel about Soviets at the moment? Oh, all right. They seem like, um, yeah, I think they're pretty good. You definitely need to have not 
let them stomp you after the fifth minute of the game. <laughs> um, you need to keep the, some level. You need to keep in things, but they they are do, do actually outperform every other faction in the late game these days due to the seven man con upgrade um, and a few other little bits and bobs. So mm. to be honest, it's a tale of survival really. If if you can stay in the game and at least keep one VP and one high fuel etc., you're all right. But um, CN couldn't even do that. So that's that's how I see that game that we just watched at least. That'd be a tough one. I mean, actually, am I right in saying he was like a squad down really during that game because he had such a good like advantage at the start. He still matched it with like those four grenadiers, and then really there was just kind of like nothing until the T seventy. I mean, normally T seventy, I think then he went for guards afterwards. So I really like invested way too much in that T seventy. Yeah. I think the T seventy was kind of okay, but I don't know. It's, it, it seems like he needed to, to time his pushes with the T seventy. He needed to have a couple of con squad with it at all times to, to actually, you know, make it work for him. Like do you know how the Stuart has played with the USF against like for example OKW? Sure. You don't play with the Stuart in the front line, you play it with behind the rifleman. Um it felt like it needed to be like that a little bit. I don't know. Mm. Anywho. Let me update the scores. I could have predicted that I could be doing this. But I do think CN has a very good chance as Wehrmacht. He, he plays in, in, on, at the tournament level a lot better as Wehr from what I've seen in the past. So, Do you want me to tell you my tale of playing a Silver? He played against me with only combat engineers. He told me what he was going to do. And I, the most I can make it last was like 25 minutes. <laughs> oh, he's allowed like tanks after he's like got a tier 4 or whatever. But he is right. just something else. It's just insanity. Um, Stormus, uh, what's your favourite introduction from a tournament we've ever done? You know, like Stinger. I've got them all loaded up. You get to choose the Stinger. Stinger? Oh. Um, we've done GCS2 and King of the Hill so far. The GCS2 yeah. one was pretty good. For old time's sake. You want to see that one again? Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Here we see Asilda, the reigning world champion. Of, well, two world championships, of course. The last Master League tournament, the ML5. Uh, the finals, he won that as well. He's playing as Soviets for here, to here today. He's 1-0 up. Stormless, what does CN have to do differently? Well, I mean, he played very, very well in the last game. I think, don't, don't think we can take that away from him. Uh, I think he just has to match what Asilda uh, did, to be honest. I think it's up to Asildor to kind of do something different with Soviets this time around. Already we're seeing the same starting builds from both players. Um, but, you know, you look at what Asildor did, you look at how he positioned all his machine guns on the map, you look at the four man, uh, sorry, the four Grenadier squads, you know, great map control, uh, great ability to Faust the T70 whenever that popped its head up. So actually, I would just say, don't change anything. You, you saw how well that worked for your opponent. <laughs> do the same thing, play it, play it well. Exactly, and we're probably going to have a little bit of Homer Simpson tries to build a barbecue if you try and do exactly what Asilda does. You know, why doesn't mine look like that kind of thing? Because, uh, you know, I don't think anybody can quite play the game exactly like him. Cien, the best I've seen, and I hate to, to, to use this player's name because we all heard what happened about him, but Seeking for me was probably the player that when playing um, legitimately had the best chance against Isilda. And the reason is, is he played a different kind of style. He played like ultra aggressive, like nose down, just wanting to take you out of the game in the first 10 minutes. And I think like the DevM and Kimbos of the world, if they trained up to the highest they could be, or even PFC and stuff like that, they, they'd have a really good chance. But I really feel playing traditional company heroes right now, Isilda is nigh on unbeatable. Hate to say it, unbeatable. That is a that is a claim. <laughs> well, for the last two years, it's difficult to prove me otherwise. Very true, but someone out there can do it. Someone, someone can. Hasn't seen. Maybe and a creative name who's not quite in the VP in the north. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> Asildor, who's not quite in the VP in the north. Sorry there. Oh, it can't be perfect. Do you see oh. yourself as more of a Qui Gon Jin or a, or an Obi Wan Kenobi? 
feel that we need to find some child with high Medichlorian levels. Mm. That can bring balance to the force. And, and truly go pod racing and give a soldier a challenge. Because at the moment, uh, you know, we need to find that child, Storms, and train them up from a, a youngling. I actually, a lot of the, the really like vibrant, fresh playstyles, I think, do come from young players. I uh, actually haven't seen many of them in the past year. But, um, you know, actually, uh, you have to be fearless in a game like this, really. In, uh, in Co2, like, when people play kind of like static and stable, they don't take those risks, and you also don't get the payoffs. And, um, you know, you do have to dive behind enemy lines sometimes. You do have to build a bunker outside your opponent's base when it's necessary. Because <laughs> it does force your opponent to make teching decisions. It does put them in positions that are unnatural, maybe unusual. And uh, the dark arts, indeed. Like this. <laughs> oh yeah. Asilda, by the way, he went with a combat engineer all the way north. We've been watching the engagement in the south. It kind of speaks for itself. Good play by Izzy with the cons to come from their side. Sien's got to defend here. Really has. He's been able to force away one conscript. He's been putting the pressure on the fuel cut off all this while. But co fresh combat engineers, he knew they had a flamethrower coming. So he backs away. Good play by Cn there. He's also backing away with the MG42. Trying to keep this conscript off balance. Can he get a burst off with the buzzsaw? No, he can't. And he suffers a lot of health damage from the flamethrower. Very lucky to escape with two grenadiers there. Very lucky that indeed. That retreat path. That retreat path one. <laughs> That's amazing. I actually thought it was going to go down by the fuel and he would have lost that. He is very, very lucky to get away with that. Do you know what also makes him lucky? The fact the MG wasn't spread out. If they were spread out over here, they could have caused the algorithm to go south of this house. And that would have been a dead grandier. So very fine margins there. Very fine indeed. Our opponents are seizing a sector. This is a really risky early game. Again, late retreats from a couple of units here. Don't want to leave those grenadiers in with the flamethrowers on the engineers. Oh. This suppression is essential. But he's also taken some big Moz and Nagant hits to the head. MG is lucky to not be dead right now. Conscript on the move. Accuracy can't help him. He's battling hard. He knows that Asilda's coming for him. In the north, he's capping with a grenadier right now. This grenadier is fighting for its life. I, uh, I don't have high hopes for this at the moment. There's a lot of uh, model health damage on uh, creative name squads. He does not have healing up yet. He's not even tried to attempt it because he's just trying to get that manpower to contend with really just two engineer squads and three conscripts. And you look at what he's having to put into this game just to deal with Isildur's five units. <laughs> Yes, that combat engineer with a flamethrower, it felt like he was dealing with a Belrog or something. It was horrendous. And he did say you, that he will not pass, but he kind of... How many units did he lose there? He's trading KD with Soviets as Wehrmacht. That's, that's really down at the moment on the manpower economy for CN. Yeah, this is actually really tough. A creative name just got caught as well using a field medical kit. Um, you know, on field. So, waste of 10 munitions there. Again, the unit remains unhealed. And it's currently on its way back to base, so this isn't going well for Creative Name at all. Um, but as we've seen with a lot of the Ostia games, you know, if you can actually get Tier 2 up, get that Scout car up, which it looks like Creative Name's doing right now, and you can start to turn things around. Oh my gosh, look at that machine gun. You see with the conscripts there running straight into it. Straight past it as well. They've got bigger sights. But one thing I do like about what Cien's doing here is playing more aggressively. He cannot afford to fight the traditional company heroes battle against the superior player. He has to throw something, some malice and chaos into the engine because otherwise it's a straight race. You don't want to enter a drag race with a Bugatti Veyron, do you? You want to get it into a dirty, mud, you know, off-country battle or something. <laughs> Rally, that's it. That was the analogy I needed. But you do, you, because at the moment, Isildur's too efficient. He'll just streak ahead of you in a straight line race. You have to make it messy. Similar analogies exist in many other sports. In football, you can't play Barcelona in a free-flowing game of, you know, passing football. You have to play, uh, you have to give them some fouls, crosses, headers, etc. Every sport's got a confrontation like this, and CN right now has to play dirty. And it's intimidating because, you know, you probably want to 
you know, toy with the idea of, okay, like, there's a squad here, maybe I'll use a rifle grenade, but you have to kind of keep in your head. <laughs> My opponent has been so on form uh, with their micro, you know, with keeping on top of multiple engagements that, you know, maybe uh, that's not available to me, and then you, you don't even take the chance, do you know what I mean? That's the kind of fear factor that you have from playing someone like a Isildur. You may not even take the chance when it's there. Um, you know, just that psychology factor alone is... Is, uh, is incredible. It's daunting, it's isn't it? It's scout car. Oh no. He hasn't got the uh, pack 40 out. He does have a grenadier by this scout car. He does He does have enough munitions as well as, as now for a Faust. But this Gren's soon to be forced away. There it goes. He's pretending he's got a pack here. He's got no choice but to pretend he has a pack. Oh, and the the folly's over. T70 backs away. He's kind of, does he have a pack? <laughs> I would have a pack by now. So he's just been a little bit cautious there. He's like, I might risk it, but I'm probably going to win anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Come on, Cien. We're all willing you on here. That's one thing, actually. I, I, from all the games that I personally have cast of the sealed doors, um, you know, is that there is a commitment to playing constantly, like, sorry, consistently well. You know, actually, there isn't, however, I don't think I've ever seen it where he's like, okay, like, I'm winning this game, I'm just going to dive because I can, you know, it's like, even if I lose this game, I get another chance. So there's none of that. Actually, it's just perfect execution, 24-7. You and, have uh, to yeah. love Company Heroes to be as good as Company Heroes as a Sildur is, and he absolutely loves the way this game's played, and he plays it properly. He doesn't want to go, he, he sees it, the way he's playing it is the way he sees it to be played. If you ever speak to him, he doesn't want to play crazy tank rushes or just go mental. He loves this kind of combined arms, slow, steady, you know, chess-like uh, version of the game. Yeah, and you can see someone who's really, uh, you know, studied the map well. As every time you see the machine gun down, the position of it's perfect. He knows where that, that sweet spot is. For every unit, in every position on the map, he can switch it up really quickly. Right, okay. There is a mine here on his grenadier. He needs to make sure he sweeps that, otherwise his grenadier will randomly explode. Ah, okay. It was swept, and it's about to not be swept. <laughs> yep, well it was detected. Don't forget, as soon as the distance changes there, he's, he's gonna just combust all of a sudden, like a bird that sat in a kilogram of rice. Meanwhile, we've got 2-2-2 two 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 running away from the AT nade. Oh, there he goes! <laughs> to be careful, he has to be so careful. Oh, this AT gun's finally here. It's finally on the way. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Oh, so close. He ran round the mine there. He still might die anyway, but the prone conscripts are suppressed. They don't have the DPS. 18A threatens the 222 packs in position. Conscript spots the pack. The T70 will not pursue. I'm not sure if uh, Creative Name spotted where that um, Dushka machine gun was. If he did, he'll be able to flank it here and force it back. Yeah, even get a cheeky rifle made off. No. Silda doesn't fancy it right now. He's getting his units off the field. Interesting. Look at that reaction time with the T70. It's so quick. Even with all the momentum of that vehicle moving forward, he can still just avoid it. And the T70 there. It looks like it blew up on mine. Uh, yeah. They ran over it. It's Crazy all about time. timing, isn't it? You ha Don't forget, all the players are probably dealing with, uh, you know, about... 100 milliseconds of ping both ways and just that timing, that feel for the game. It's off, it's off the chain, you know what I mean? I, I kind of feel like you uh, you want to get a sealed door when he's on an, an off day, if you know what I mean, but I just haven't seen it yet. <laughs> seen well, this. he lost 30% of his hearing due to COVID, he was telling me. 30% of his hearing. So maybe uh, play with units that are quite loud, I don't know. <laughs> Brit Universal Carrier Recon. <laughs> Just spam it. Spam it constantly. Oh, there's a cheeky uh, demo as well, by the way, here. Just to add insult to injury. But I think, actually, you know, it's... um. 
I think we see a little bit of the same maybe problem we saw in game one, which is just creative name isn't really committing to an area of the map. He's kind of trying to take all fronts on, and then it means he just loses what I'll he tell has. you what, Dan, he's doing a decent assault right now. 2-2-2 two, two, two goes past the Dushka. Pat's trying to get a shot, and Grens have been forced away, however. And the Comanches are looking to pick the kill up. This was CN throwing a bit of a gamble in there. Got conscripts come around the rear side, throwing Molotov in on the MG that has flipped upon them. They've got to retreat past multiple LMGs now. So he threw some chaos into the engine. Has he got any of the map back down? No. I mean, this is the problem. Like, you, you've got to have a direction you're going after your opponent retreats, and we're not seeing that here. And the Sildo is going to have enough time to get some units back onto the north, which I think is really the only viable direction Creative Name can go. Still no commander pick from Creative Name, which is interesting. Um, he must know what a Sildo is playing now because of the Dushka, which is, of course, Lend Lease. A powerful commander if he has ever been one. Trying to get some cheeky shots in, but there's all this, this assembly. Shot blocking concrete boulevard. Oh, conscript with the new raw. They're probably going to go stationary now and try and get some shots. No, they're going to Molotov the MG42 and run through the flames. That's epic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's the 2 to 2 is going to die to Mozant the Gunfire, maybe. I just expect everything Asilda to do to be like the touch of death. Oh, is, there's a demo charge, by the way, in the south. Yeah, I know, right? He should be able to spot that. I would have thought. Is he just out of the range of it? It's if he jumps in the house from the east side. Oh, oh yeah, the pioneers have probably spotted it. I imagine. Look like it. These Molotovs are just causing so many problems for the Grenadiers. Any cover positions Creative, names ha uh, creative Name has is immediately negated. Here we actually see finally a bit of a retreat on the north. Isilda needs to take advantage of this, but again, he's not going for that fuel. He's not going for the VP. He's constantly trying to push. I think maybe he's going for the strategic decap on resources in the north. I'm not sure, but you know, he's leaving no. himself out the flanks here. Oh, he's just hard counted. It's double fuel coming in as well. It's going to leave him requiring a double pack 40 most likely. Here comes the M4C Sherman. <laughs> it's like lone machine gun in the south. Yeah. Isildur. Isildur's immediately on it. T70's just got, you know, straight path down to the south. Creative name just about getting tier 3 up. Can only assume that he's going to be trying to get that Panzer IV out. Do you think he'd go for a stew? I think he's nah. Maybe thinking, maybe I can get two <laughs> if I can hang on. <laughs> We're thinking outside the box here, but <laughs> um, how is he? Did you say he's got battle phase? Ah, he has got it. Okay, so yes, yeah, if he gets to his Panzer IV, he should be fairly happy. I mean, how many standard territory points has he been able to keep? One, two, three, four, five. Five times the uh, the three. That's fifteen fuel. I'm waiting for this demo charge to go off, and I feel it's close. He's surely seen it. He's not going to no, go I in this house, it, please, for God's sake! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That family guy seen in Cleveland. But no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, actually, I, I, seriously, when, when that Pioneer was nearby, I think he was just outside of the vision range that was needed to to spot that. So I don't think it showed up. I was watching it. Yeah. I think you're right. Gren's just about surviving there. T-70 now hits Veterans C2 with five kills. MG42 and LMG trying to force away the conscripts, but the Dushka's ready and waiting. With a juicy shot on the T70, forcing it away. The Vet 2 combat engineer is close at hand. Panzer 4 is finally in the build. Very late. Yeah. 
I wouldn't be focusing on fuel right now, actually. Creative Name is going to start getting a position there in the south. And I think he's just trying maybe to occupy the middle, so there's a bit of a destruction point there. And then get his units down uh, to secure the south. I wouldn't say south on this map, though, is a particularly great area to defend as austere. You know, you can actually be attacked quite hard in the middle and the south. And if you've just got a 180 gun, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get the shots you need on on any of the vehicles coming in. you really got to commit one way or the other. It's definitely harder great. than the north, I would say, from the east side. But he's not got many choices right now. The north is protected by uh, a Dushka. So this is his only chance. Sherman smokes out his uh, folly, the MG42. Couldn't even get one victory point. He is trying in the centre to get a victory point, though. 2-2-2's two, two, been able to stay alive all this time. Very good stuff. Pack 40 finds the T-70. Oh, Sherman's pushing in here. 2-2-2 two, two, two tries to get away. Panzer IV's looking for the rear side of the Sherman. Pack 40 can't find an angle. Panzer IV can't get into the picture in time. Wow, it's so beautiful. It still does not greedy at all. It's a great moment for him, but he's content to just go in there, pick up the scout car, and uh, come away with the M4C Sherman nearly unscathed. Really good. And look at this, he's just leaving Creative Name now to go into the T70. That's a great hit, though. Oh, there's a mine. mine. There's a mine. Yes, yeah, so there's always a mine. And the Panzer IV is going to be lucky to escape now. I don't think the Zis can fire over the assembly. It should be fine. Seventy escapes. How do you go on with that feeling? Like nothing is going your way. You phoned so the Samaritans or, or something, surely. You definitely stepped down from the bridge. <laughs> you know, just start living one day at a time. If you can get out of bed, that's a success. Uh. MG forced away. Grenadiers recuperating in base. MG 42s. Sorry, the uh, Panzer Force had a decent start to the game. Pushed some units off for the time being. And he managed to capture a victory point. Not a fuel, no, but a, a victory point is a thing at least. Oh, look at the spotting from Isilda there. Let's go on to the Silda side where he's just seen what he can see with this T 70. <laughs> I think that might be the conscripts as well. But it does just give the impression that the T-70... Can the T-70 see that far? I think it, it can, can see can't the before. It can see the That's Panzer ridiculous. Right yeah, the the and they're actually going for it with the AT <laughs> gun. I mean... You're just really not safe at all. And that's the late game potential of that unit. You know, in a nutshell. And, and you see uh, Isilda now has gone for the Katusha. Really sensible decision. You have that kind of vision range. When you know your opponent is just kind of statically sitting kind of in the middle of the map thinking about where they should go the Katusha is the perfect unit it is indeed in here there are she blows first target's most likely going to be this pack and the Grens really close together now shotgun Katusha volley incoming could it be the MG oh no there it is the obvious choice he splits the units like Moses part in the Red Sea But I, I would have hit the Stug button by now. <laughs> I think Creative Name is going for that second Panzer IV. I mean, it wouldn't be such a bad thing if he does get it on the field. But Isildur, even after making that investment into Katusha, is bringing out another M4C Sherman. Just showing you the kind of map control dominance that he's had in this game so far. There's a dynamic there. You can either go Stug and have like an AT platform that's Katusha proof. Or he can go Panzer IV and give himself the opportunity to dive the Katusha at some point in time. And given the amount of mining and given how badly he's done so far, I would probably say, yeah, get a Stug. He might as well. <laughs> oh, but he has just made it to that point where he can bring out another Panzer IV. It's probably better in the long run, to be honest. But, yeah, uh, let's face it. A little bit of map control in the south. I think that's going to be short-lived. 
Always best to get generalist units and RTSs, it seems. Unfortunately, I don't see many of the specialists. The tanks, at least. To be honest, with multiple M4C Shermans, you're too much at risk of getting flanked. Need something with that turret. There's a potentially good Faust here, crazy name. Can get that M4C Sherman out of the engagement field for a while. Second Panzer Fourth now on the field. But again, it's going to be another triple cap for Isildur with literally no contention. No, not at all. The Katusha's second volley is almost ready to offload. Oh, m 4 is finding the Panzer IV. He's got his frontal armor facing. The second one comes into the picture. No penetrations to the M4C thus far. Not going well. If only he had stood. <laughs> not yeah, single no. penetration. Three bounces. Oh, these Grens. These Grens! Overshot. Oh, they're lucky to be alive, quite frankly. Well, creative name. If he picks a commander, he can kind of go in with some close air support if he wants to. I'm surprised that we haven't seen a commander pick yet. There's definitely, definitely things that could be used to make this situation a bit more favourable for him. He just hasn't opted to use it. Pack finds the M4C up there. Zis finds the Panzer IV. Gonna be meaning these Vector C1 Pioneers have a long repair time ahead of them. There's a really nice flank coming in from the north right now. Actually, Isildur takes a path through the centre. I thought he was maybe gonna come around where the munitions are. Oh, the smoke might save the Gren's lives here. The ones from the Sherman. He's using the smoke to allow the conscripts safe passage. It's like a combat tutorial video for the Americans when they're, you know, against some third world country, isn't it? And here we go. This is when we send in the Apaches. <laughs> He's just absolutely dominating the poor fella. It's really not fun. <laughs> it's... And... Yeah, he's taking out the pack now, but just that was just so such good play. The Sherman smoke into conscript flank, keeping a triple cap, or is he? Mine detonates in the south, so the four-man grenadier is now reduced to one single soldaten. It's just, it's way too much to contend with. Have you seen the film Beauty and the Beast? Which one? The one with the song about the French guy, it's like, no, I mean, no the one or the remake. <laughs> no, definitely the original. It's about uh, Guston. No one fights like Guston. No one fights like Guston. No one... We should make that song, but about Isildur. That's what this cast is, basically. No one kills a pa Panzer IV like uh, Isildur, etc. Panzer IV down. This carrying on here. We've got the Shermans ready to strike from afar. He's gone in, though, with the Stuka close air support, making it a no tank zone for the time being, giving CN some rare breathing space. So desperate. These pioneers need to be repairing the Panzer Fours right now, but the AT gun dropped to the Dushka and he has to recrew it. So much time is just getting wasted by D crews. Uh, you know, just getting like these retreats. It's really, really painful to look at. These, Dush these uh, Stukas were loaded with 80 rounds only, meaning the Dushka could slip CN's gaze and Kappa Southern Victory Point, keeping the pressure on. He has no chill. Wicked Name's going for the north now. He does have light artillery barrage when he comes up against the Dushka in this, uh, in this building, although he's not going to use it. Definitely should be going for that VP. That is 100% the direction that would be favorable for him right now. AZ gun slightly out of position as the M4C Sherman comes in on a great flank. He does the Katusha range death fire from above on the MG there. We do have a Faust in on the M4C, but there's the takedown from afar. M4C will die. It's a one for one death, meaning no Panzer IVs remain. Double Zis Barrage takes out the pack as well. Oh my. Crescendo of fatality. 
<laughs> Synchronized. I, I had a small prayer for creative name, you know, that when the uh, Veteran C2 armor skirts came on the Panzer IV, we might see the shot bounce, but. Just, uh, <laughs> a small not, prayer. Uh, Dear Lord. The range needed. <laughs> Dear Lord, please allow a soldier to kill CN. Merciless, mercifully, and, and quickly. <laughs> That's all we can pray for at this point. Please make his passage quick and his suffering small. Thank you. <laughs> oh god. He's trying everything he can to stay in this, stay in this tournament, stay in this series. Oh, packs down. And uh, does she just cap in down there? 29 victory points remain. And that's all she wrote. We've got a T70 capping. M4C's repairing. My game stopped. Your game stopped. Mine's still going. That must mean the game's over, I think. Yes, the game is definitely over. Although it's interesting, the host of the Observer Lobby. I carry on, so I've just got the worst computer heroes game of all time going on up here. I definitely think it must be over, unless some some uh, ungodly thing happens. But uh, that was certainly a game of Company of Heroes. We're just saying, guys, that uh, that's it for Stormless for today. It's just it's a nice one to check in and see that nothing's changed whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, just checking in to make sure Isildur's still at top spot. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, still dominating. Well played to creative name, though, seriously. I mean, actually, when you look at the first game, you know, you can see that he, he can easily spar with Isildur, and it's, you know, it doesn't have many problems. I think, actually, Isildur is just so dominant throughout every stage of the game. You may play well in the early game. <laughs> it uh, doesn't necessarily mean you will hold on to that advantage for a long time. But uh, GG Isildur, well played creative name. Cheers, and thanks Stormless. Um, thanks for casting again. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you really soon. Definitely. Good to see everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, there we go, that's it from Stormless. Um, I'm going to possibly watch Eroa Elper now. Does that sound good, guys? Are there any other games you'd prefer to watch instead? Um, I think that's the leading contender. Let me just go check. Nobody else is already casting that. There probably are, to be fair. Rurik says it should be a good game. Um, ah, Greyshot's doing uh, Kimber vs. Quirit. So, yes, we'll definitely cast that one. That should do. Indeedy doody. Oh, get this silly suit off. It's been uh, that joke's been done now. Right, so I've got the game ready to go. I don't know what the score is though. I have no idea, actually. No idea. I wonder if it says on the brackets. Let's try and do some investigation. So, yeah, it's certainly good casting with um, Stormless. Very enjoyable. Um... Ah. <sighs> 
what are we doing next? Yeah, I don't know where they are on this series, so I'm just going to remove the scores until we find out. So if anybody's been watching it or anybody has any idea, it would be wonderful to find out. Cheers, Stormless. Thanks for showing up, mate. Right, I'm going to go grab another coffee. I'll be RB. Hang on a sec. Who can beat Izzy? It's a really good question. Who can beat Izzy? Um, a well-trained Dev Emil Loveness could beat Izzy. It has to be very well-trained Dev Emil Loveness. Yeah, I invested. My casting hobby is that important to me. I invested four hundred pounds into a ca into an air conditioning unit for this room. Because <laughs> casting when it's too hot is almost impossible. <laughs> no, 400, not 800. Right then, let's get this um, lobby set up. Hang on a sec. This uh, overlay. I'll put chat on in game. Um, hang on. Copy. Okay. That's oh, not going to work, is it? Uh, add browser. Okay. I just want to make one for the in game, you see. Width 500, height 300, something like that. Oh no, the other way around actually. Width 300, height. Yeah, that should do the job. Say something, guys. Let me get some. I want to make the chat legible for YouTube purposes. Um, if that makes any sense. Because, well, that's really big, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, that's really big. Let's try a little bit less big. That seems all right. Yeah. I just think when I'm casting on my own, it just adds a layer of interactivity, if you will. I don't know what you guys think. I think it does. And I'm the one that matters. It's not obnoxious, is it, having the chat up in game whilst casting? I think it's all right there. This is G2. Oh, thanks, Alpen. Does that mean G3 is starting? So don't say that, actually. Let me message you. Oh, no, you can say that, um, Alpen, because as long as you don't talk during game three, we don't know who wins game two. So nobody go to the Discord. No one is saying spoilers. If anyone says a spoiler, just give a counter spoiler. But Alpen, would you tell me, does the winner, does, do we go to a game three? Or is this it? This is just one game. Well, do say that. Because it'll tell us what's going on. It's not a spoiler, k because you don't know who wins game one. Use your big brain. I'll message him in private. Um... Okay. 
Okay, I said, is there a game three or does winner of the game two win the series? I need to know what I'm doing. Okay, winner of G2 wins. Oh, okay, guys. Oh, interesting. Alpern says that both games are, are close, but game one was better. So now we know there's only one game to watch. G2 isn't close at all. Interesting. What we need then is we need the replay file. But I need somebody to go into Discord and spoilerize themselves for me. Um... Okay, I've sent Alpern instructions. So Alpern's going to send, he's going to download game one, he's going to send it to me, and uh, he's going to send it to me on Discord. Alpern's a legend. He'd do this, he's one of the few people that would ever do this even if they had lost. So we'll have a very good game to watch here, regardless. currently doing that now and there's a bit of a delay so that's creating anticipation generally don't know what happens very good very good how are we all in the co community today have I had any um, shout outs to give did see one subscription earlier on and um, it was 80, Cro 80 Croxy, thank you and C-Men 699 <laughs> C-Men <laughs> that's who subscribed to me earlier that's funny, C-Men because we, like, we all like naval, people that are in the navy right, C-Men I'm sure this is given. Right. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we have the, the replay sent to me by Mr. Alpern. Uh huh. Oh, Alpern said something nice. Right, there we go. Yeah, this, the chair's pretty good at that. Go to the replay o meter. Alright, we've got it loaded up. Nice uh, game here featuring Alpern, the Roa. Leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when. Oh, don't look at the brackets. It's probably got spoilers on by now, Zodiac. Be careful, mate. For this next game, it's probably got bracket. Uh, bracket. Why am I getting sync error detected? For God's sake. Like, 
what could have changed between now and when I'm doing this? Why like, it's got giving sync error detected. Ugh. Oh. That mean I don't trust that. I don't want to cast it because it'll probably be crap. Oh. oh for God's sake. It makes no sense because nobody's updated the map or the mod. Uh, yeah, we'll try restart game. That's a good shout, actually. Let's not give up too completely much, so. Unless Alpen was hacking. We've uncovered a conspiracy. To the AU mobile. I really doubt renaming the file creates a sync error either. I don't think that's a thing. To the gate danger shuts indeed. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, fuck off strumming bird. It's not a white van. It's it's an off grey van. White is too visible. Night time. So it's a black van actually. Such a noob. You'd never make a good serial killer strumming bird. You don't know the ways. Oh, please, come on. No more sync errors. It's going to be sync error again, I think. Leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll be back again. Leaving on a jet plane. Sync error detected. Sync error detected. Let's go see if there's any more games to cast. This one's a goner. Replays sometimes bug out apparently. It's a new thing. Brand new thing for 2021. Let me just try something, guys. I'm going to go and spoilerize myself now. Um, right, okay. Let me just uh, whack the replay back in. Give it one more go, just in case renaming the replay can somehow break it. I don't know if that's a thing. Probably not a thing. Let's try one more time. I like cheese bacon. I also like bacon bacon, but I don't eat bacon anymore. Bacon. It's bad for me. Gives me heart attacks and stuff. Fingers crossed, guys. This is our last chance to watch this replay. Well, maybe maybe renaming it does break it, Zany. Or maybe... I don't know. Maybe I've got the wrong version of the map and the mods and I need to reinstall them. That could be a thing. That could be a thing. That could be a thing. So maybe it's my copy of Come Heroes that's the problem. All right, let's try that then. So let's re reinstall the maps and the mod because obviously i've had the map and the mods for a long time oh and importantly i mess around uh, it could be that yeah let's try all right let's try that good thinking batman how many errors um mods i'm gonna delete my maps files yeah yeah get out come here come on Let's delete everything. Deleting everything I've got, guys. And I'm just going to try again with it. Get rid of all my SGAs from my saved game. Everything. Just get rid of everything. Right. Okay. Now it's reload Company Heroes. It'll force it to re download the mods. <laughs> Almond, you are very funny, you know. But basically, what I just did, I went to my documents, I deleted all the SGAs that I have. Um, 
and of course the replays by accident but I can re redo that quite quickly alright let's put that download back in there It's like disarming a bloody. Uh, you, I yeah, I installed my map hack as well. The one that I clearly I'm not very good at using. Uh, okay, and when did you say this is our last chance? We actually have a new last chance now. Brand new last chance. Let's go. Two, let's get that subscribed and Fucking hell. Right, I've got everything I need. Although replays aren't showing now. <laughs> Let's close Steam. Let's try that and open Steam again. Fuck my life. Alpen, what is that uh <laughs> that emote you've made? It were like my new crazy emotes. I think they're pretty good. The the fire I made, the thingies. <laughs> I overused the shaking thing, but I think the shaking one's the best transition. <laughs> Broken replay kit. Mate, I'm having so many crits now. I'm having bad crits in life. I know, that's the best one, isn't it, Caper? <laughs> oh, gosh. Here we go. Last chance, lads. Come on. Come on. Come on. I've now loaded Co2 after reinstalling all the mods and the maps and everything I could think of. Still, replays aren't showing. Now, replays aren't showing whatsoever. Like, even slightly. And I'll put show incompatible replays in the thing, just in case that helps. Hold down that replay. I don't know what's happening, Zany. I've never seen this before. Don't mind sharing my screen with you guys. So we can be on the same journey together. Through this madness. Come on. There it is. There's the replay file. It's been renamed, so don't worry about that. Yet it won't show. So next what we're going to do, this is going to be exciting, we're going to create a custom game and see if that shows. Why won't this show? <sighs> My Mill Road says no key, which is quite good. See if that shows. Be a very small replay file. <laughs> exactly 101st. What game did you cast 101st today? Right, let's see if this works. That shows. <laughs> Uh, why does that one show but the others don't? 
So now we've got temp and that one both there. Ugh, it makes no sense. But it's not showing, mate. It's literally not showing. Uh, let me try. Okay, let me try re-downloading it one last time, because other people have got it to show, but for some reason, it's not working for me. How does this game get buggier and buggier every year? Seriously, it's so difficult to make it just work. <laughs> just work. <laughs> oh dear. All right, replays and results. Let's try again one last time. Download it. That saps your morale, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, I've got that on. I've got that on, mate. Oh, uh, if, if Kotu thinks the header is corrupted, okay. No, it's not working. See if there's any custom games still going. I doubt it. I think it was one series today. Relic conspired us against us, lads. But uh, a Swiss win still versus Theodosios. That could be decent. Wonder if that's their deciding game. Don't want to over overstep the mark of somebody who's already casting it, you see. Yes, great shots doing that one. Uh, I think that's it, to be honest. I can't see anybody else still going. It's not the tournament's fault, mate. It's, uh, it's Relic's fault, to be honest. Not Relic's, but the game's fault. Whatever. You know what I mean. I knew, I knew. Right, come watch me suffer then, guys. Let's play some bloody uh -oh. auto match. I'll play a couple of games and then I'll head off.